Hey, welcome along to this evening's uh, group coaching call. One-on-one uh, -on -one tonight, Kelly. So <clears throat> at this stage, hopefully someone else um, jumps in as we're going along. So run with power. Uh, there's a number of athletes, including yourself, that are currently using power as a measurement tool um, to help monitor and measure intensity in combination with not just heart rate, but pace uh, as well. Um, power is and has been a bit of a game changer. I think it was about 2017 when I got my first stride um, power meter and have been using it constantly since then. The synopsis for what we're going to be covering tonight um, for this Run With Power presentation, uh, we'll start off with the tech needed to run with power. We're going to look at intensity measurement, the benefits of running with power, the challenges of running with power, looking at some contrasting success, and then finishing with how to maximize your time within the appropriate training zone for whatever the workout is that you're doing. So firstly, the tech needed to run with power. Um, back previously, the only tech available was using a foot pod. Since then, that has uh, expanded, and there's other ways of getting that data. Uh, and using a watch only is a viable option these days. Uh, most or pretty much all the big players, Garmin, Polar, Poros, Suntu, uh, as well as Apple, have all got running with power options uh, within their product categories. Um, and foot pods, you can also get insoles for your shoes that measure power, but um, Stride has pretty much got the foot pod side of the market sewn up, but Coros do have a foot pod as well. Uh, if we look at the majority of uh, top runners, and I know there was a study done at the um, American Marathon Trials for the Olympic Games, um, the majority of both the top men and top females in that race were all wearing stride foot pods as the, the more reliable and accurate um, power data as opposed to the watch or wrist-generated power <coughs> Uh, that comes from the, the watch options. Uh, the other advantage of having the foot pod uh, is it measures displacement um, at the foot. And if you're going through a tunnel or uh, lose GPS coverage for any number of reasons, then that is still measuring that displacement uh, through non-GPS means and can broadcast that to the watch. Anyway, moving on, looking at uh, intensity measurement, um, there's four main ways of um, tracking intensity, but only three of them we're measuring. So subjective rating of perceived exertion, I've discounted for the slide. Um, the, the three remaining ones are pace, which can be affected by a range of different factors, uh, including the terrain, the wind strength, the wind speed. Uh, so they all play into... Um, how that pace can be affected, as well as heat. Um, if we're looking at heart rate, that can be affected by things as how fatigued you are, how well nourished and or hydrated you are, how much caffeine you consume that day, or ingestion of other stimulants or suppressants as well. Whereas power, it measures the effort that you put in, and more specifically the forces involved in moving at that effort level. When we look at the um, benefits of running with power, uh, our ability to measure an output consistently is that the key part of it. Your heart rate fluctuates from session to session and pace is dependent on the terrain. If you look at that picture there, looking at the runner going uphill, downhill and on the flat, the heart rate lags behind its peak the athlete's already starting to descend down the hill, depending on the steepness of the hill and a few other things. Um, but there's a lag of two to three minutes for most people um, based on the intensity they're running at. And same occurs when you get down the bottom of the hill and level out. There's a, a bit of a lag before it starts coming back up again. The rating of perceived exertion, the longer and steeper that hill is, the higher that rating of perceived exertion is going to be. 
uh, independent from the amount of effort that you're giving or sustaining uh, up that hill, the duration and the steepness are going to elevate the rating of perceived exertion. Uh, and then dropping off the other side as well. Pace, our pace is going to slow down and be the slowest on the uphill. On the downhill, for the same amount of effort, the pace is going to be higher and, and then it's going to taper off uh, and balance somewhere above the pace that we ran uphill at uh, for the same amount of effort. Now, when we run with power, um, the amount of effort when we're running uphill, we're, we're working against gravity. So the effort is going to need to be higher to overcome that gravity. On the downhill, that effort uh, is going to be lower because the gravity is now assisting us with our performance. And then there's a bit of a, um, a, a settling in period once we get down onto the flat. Now, power can measure your performance directly. It's objective and it's precisely repeatable. What I mean by that is that when you're running at 300 watts, that 300 watts is the same amount of work today, tomorrow, next week, next month. It might be a different proportion of your functional threshold power, but that 300 watts is measuring the work you're putting in at that given time. Whereas that 300 watts might relate to a six minute K pace on one day. It might be a five minute 45 K pace the next day. And a week later, it might be a seven minute K pace um, due to one of the other uh, factors. So there's that variability that we're trying to avoid. We want to measure how much work we are actually doing. Challenges of running with power is that that power data can fluctuate a little bit. And that's the part of the makeup of how that power is measured. From stride to stride, you're overcoming different forces, different friction, particularly when we go off-road. The um, If we're moving from gravel to sand to mud, there's a lot more movement occurring at the foot that needs to be stabilized, and that needs power um, to to stabilize it at the end of the day. We can look at the different uh, vectors of power. We've got the forward displacement, we've got the side-to-side -side displacement, and we've got the vertical displacement. In all reality, to get from point A to point B in a running race, we're only really worried about that forward displacement. But that power is measured in all three dimensions. So with the different terrains require a little bit more different um, power based on the fact that we're needing to stabilize our foot on position, especially when there's um, the, the terrain we're planting our foot, or, foot on isn't giving us as firm a footing as asphalt. When it comes to staying in zone, it takes a fair bit of practice a little bit of focus, and a reasonable dose of patience. Before we get into some tips on how to uh, manage that, um, here is an Athletes Running, uh, two sessions from within the last month. Top one there, Jamie's Tempo Run Session A, which involves four five-minute reps at level three, and between those reps is two minutes at level two for a rest interval. So if we look at the warm-up here, this initial period, the target is 260 to 282 watts, and that's the same target during the rest intervals and in the cool-down. These reps here at level three, the four of them, the target was 286 to 305 watts. Now the warm-up here, you can see the majority of it's a little bit under. Um, average or the normalized power for the warm-up was 258 watts, so a fraction um, under the 260. When we get into the reps and the rest intervals, 293 for the first one, 286, 292, and then 287. So slap bang, exactly where it needed to be. The rest interval in between, 258, a smidgen too low, 249, a fraction too low, 245, a fraction too low, then 251. Um, for there's a two minute rest interval after that last one. Um, so pretty much on the money, but just a smidgen too low. Sometimes you can't even can't manage um, the preciseness of um, a normalized power plus or minus one or two watts 
uh, particularly for a short period of time. Then the cool down, 249 watts. From a coaching perspective, it would be nice if everything was slap bang in the middle. The reality is running out in the real world, and as you can see, gentle climb and then a gentle descent. Um, the out by a few watts at the lower intensities is not a drama at all, especially when the four reps are hit so precisely. Contrast that to today's run. This data relates to they're running from today. I'm just going to move this bar out of the way. Um, so this was a rehearsal for a race plan for an ultra. So going out two hours, 6.7 kilometers at level two plus, and then 1.3 kilometers at level two minus. And as you can see, these higher sections here, 6.7 kilometers, the target was 260 to 282 watts. So the same as the uh, the warm up, the cool down, and the rest intervals from above, and then 241 to 260 watts, the the bottom end of things um, for 1.3 kilometers in between. 240 to start with, so a little bit low from the target, and you can see there's a lot of um, fluctuations. Too high initially, and it is reasonably steep, and I know where they ran, and that literally is. Uh, one of the steeper sections, straight into it. Uh, a gentle climb, gentle downhill, a longer steady climb. Just for your awareness, the um, the scale on the side here is a lot steeper, uh, a lot higher, covering um, 100 and something metres on this side, whereas it's only 30 odd metres for this one. So it looks a little bit different. And the time scale as well is you're less than an hour whereas that's over two hours, the, the length of it. Um, so you can see there was a lot of um, fluctuations um, of a reasonably significant nature compared to what they did in the warm-up for the other session. The 1.3 kilometres, it's slightly reduced. Um, the normalised power is 2.23, so a little bit low again, 2.20 for the next 6.7 kilometers. So dropping way out or even below that one, then 208, so drop down um, and below the target, and then 261 for this last leg here. Um, so overall, hitting the targets didn't go too well. And I've having spoken to them, I know they had a really great run. It was really enjoyable. It's a place they don't normally run. Um, and the scenery up there is absolutely amazing. Um, so sometimes runs, although they're an amazing run, don't go to plan. Um, and sometimes that's just the nature of the beast. Let's have a look at Athlete B's workouts. And these are my workouts. So a couple of sessions here. Um, also within the last month. So this is a workout that Garmin recommended for me. Um, it's a, a threshold run with 16 minutes of effort in the middle uh, with a warm-up and a cool-down. Now, this session here sort of benchmarked my power data. Um, and so you'll see that in the warm-up here, I was trying to target 275 to 299 but I was only 265, so I was a little bit low. This section here, the 16 minutes at level four, 326 to 357. Absolutely nailed it at 348, and then I was a little bit low for the cool down. Like I said, this segment in here benched mark things for, for this workout. Running-wise, I was actually trying to keep that well under uh, 300, which I did do. Um, yeah, not the optimal intensity. I wasn't looking really at my watch and trying to maintain that. In contrast to this run here, um, once again, this was a really enjoyable run. I enjoyed this run, um, but you can see there's some massive fluctuations. Uh, there's, I'm just trying to remember where it would be. That's the halfway point. That's where I turned around. 
uh, there was a creek I couldn't cross there, and that's why I turned around at that point. Uh, and a couple of these leading into it were stream crossings. Having made my way through it the first time, I was able to get through them quicker. I can't tell you exactly which lower sections these are. Uh, there was a couple of crossings there. Um, but arriving on the edge of the stream, came um, put, it, put together a bit of a plan on the spot by pausing to come up with it. And then on the way back, I just did the, the reverse. So you can see some of them um, are up and down quite a lot as a result of that. So my target was 275 to 229, so the same as the warm-up there. But my normalised power for the whole run was 252. And you see I barely got out of it early on. A couple of times I pushed the pace a little bit too much, and the rest of the time I was way under. Um, as I said before, not every run goes to plan. Um, this run I hardly looked at my watch the whole time. Uh, and just ran uh, in a new place I'd never ran before, and it was an enjoyable run. So how to maximise your time and zone. Uh, a couple of key things to do um, is to focus on it. The If you're looking at your watch, running along, just staring at your watch, it's probably a little bit too much focus, but glancing at it every minute or so to make sure you're pretty close to being in zone. Uh, is a good way to do it. Um, as you build familiarity with what uh, any given wattage feels like, you won't need to check your watch so frequently. Having a display similar to these ones here where you've got a, a contrast bar that shows where you're running. This one here, uh, I've had my Garmin set like this uh, previously. I find it really handy that white line moves depending on where you are in the spectrum of intensity. Green is within zone. Obviously, the red is either side. Uh, this, some settings have a wee bar of yellow there as well to indicate that you are nearly out of zone. And just glancing and looking and making sure you are in the center of the screen uh, is uh, a great way of monitoring your time in or out of zone. This is the stride display uh, on a Garmin. Uh, there's two different options. There's the similar one there where you've got the intensity showing that between 298 and 341 is the target in this instance, and you're wanting that dot to be in that center. If it's on either side, you are too high or too low. And this one here is looking at the, um, the different zones, trying to hit the zone two, here between 340 and 343, zone 3, zone 4, zone 5, and zone 1. So you can see at a glance which zone you're currently in. So regularly glancing at your watch is a great way to monitor that and having a display where you can visually see it rather than go, oh, okay, I'm at 218 watts, I'm supposed to be at 298, so I'm below. Um, having that just colourful display with that line like a, um, a speedometer in a car you can just glance and know straight away. The other thing to do is look ahead. Um, look for when maintaining your pace will adjust your effort. So when you can see you're coming up to a hill, you know you're going to need to back off um, to keep your power within zone. Um, if you're turning a corner going into a headwind, same again, you're going to need to back off uh, especially if you're using a stride with the the wind um, reading. So for those that aren't familiar with the stride wind pod, it actually measures the wind and wind direction as well and calculates how that's impacting your run uh, and incorporates that into the data. So when you see something that's going to impact that, make the appropriate adjustments um, to moderate that intensity. And the reverse on the, um, if you're getting to something that's going to speed things up, uh, running downhill is always easier. So you need to put in a lot more effort to maintain that power output um, that might be scheduled for you. So have a bit of a plan in place before you get to those points and check as you're running downhill or running uphill, check that you are still in zone, back off or push a little bit harder as needed. 
Uh, so in summary, power can be more effective than heart rate or pace at measuring your intensity. Not every run will be executed perfectly and know your numbers and track them during the workout will help you achieve uh, those targets. Any questions there, Kelly? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess my main question is this. So then when you're going downhill, you just need to push faster, run faster. And when you're going uphill is, well, today I needed to run faster uphill as well. Yeah, <laughs> just, not, just run faster. Faster than what you did, but not necessarily yeah. faster um, than um, if you're doing the equivalent um, zone two, uh, level two running pace. Um, mm. so monitor it and, and um, track it maybe even yeah. set your alarm every five minutes in case you haven't checked it uh, that will oh, go off I watch, you can... I watch beeps when I'm out of zone anyway like and I've, it just does <laughs> so yeah. like it'll tell me when I go too high and then it's got a slightly different beep for when I go too low yeah. so um, that, yeah that and, can be a double-edged sword as well in terms oh, of it can be it can be a real pain in the ass on some runs but it, it actually didn't bother me should I was like oh whatever um but yeah some runs it is it's a pain in the ass because you just yeah um no that's all right um and I guess the other thing is just in terms of executing it is I mean I've got pretty good where I normally run on the trail because I know it so well of where my dips and inclines are that I do just put a bit more power on and things like that when I know I need to or I button off. Um, and I know coming back down the tram one that's a slightly downhill, so I always just run it a bit faster on my way back out. Um, I guess that there's just the challenge where I run sometimes places which is slightly different is just not knowing the track or the trail as well as... Yeah, just um, you sort of make it up as you go along a wee bit more. Yeah, going along the tramway there, it's um, obviously it was an old tramway and it was designed to be pretty close to flat, but it is a, a false flat. It just gently goes uphill uh, and then obviously downhill on the way back. And mm. you notice it more on the way back than you do on the, up, on the, the way yeah. out. So, yeah. No, that's all right. Um, no, it's probably sort of just answered my questions again around power. Is it's just like I mean, I am better at running to power than what I was when I first started it. Um, yeah, and I mean, I guess I look at you know, like today's run, and I'm like, well, I'd sort of spent most of my run and my endurance heart rate zone, so that was good. It was actually a pretty comfortable run the whole way. Like I could have could have chatted to someone if I had company. Um, nice. But, yeah, so that's all right. It's still, I still got fitter from running today. Yeah, perfect. So I know um, a number of people struggle with um, power, myself included, in terms of getting the precision that they can get compared to other um, measurements of intensity within a yeah. workout. Uh, yeah, Jess, like, I mean, yeah. Jess is an exception. She is pretty much always precise, precisely on her power targets for her runs. Um, it's almost a shame she wasn't on the call tonight um, to tap into her and um, I would have asked her a couple of questions uh, on the spot yeah. to see what she does. Um, but I might see if she can respond with some comments in the yeah. VIP group. Yeah, no, I mean, I'd be interested to know, yeah. And, or maybe it's just, I mean, has she, has, has she ever run to pace before? Has she always just run to power? Maybe that's the difference too. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to suggest that. Um, but, yeah, so I'm her first coach and she had the power on her watch right from day dot. So that's what all we focused on with the training. So Yeah, 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 right. So... But that's okay. I mean, like I said, as if I was still having to run to a heart rate zone, like I'd be, I'd be pretty good at nailing that now. I'd be like bang on all the time. Yep. So. Uh, any other questions? Um, Garmin. So some of the other things on Garmin, like Garmin Connect on my phone. Yep. Um, Garmin tells me I'm peaking at the moment. Is that there's that's just sort of driven from Garmin's own training stress scores and things like that from when it syncs activities? Yeah, so there's a number of things that lead into that. I 
take that Garmin data with a grain of salt. Yeah. Um, but there's a few things that they look at, or the AI within the Garmin Connect looks at. It looks yeah. at your performance. So the last five weeks, you've been getting faster and faster and faster and faster uh, with every 5K race that you did, with one exception where you're out by a handful of seconds. So yeah. the Garmin's picking up on that you're getting faster and faster. Yeah. It's looking at your training load um, and your overall uh, historic training stress. And it's yeah. looking and tracking that that fitness is building upwards as well. Everything's trending upwards. So that's what it's, why it's suggesting you're peaking. If you jump into training peaks and look at the performance management chart, the PMC, um, yeah. you'll notice that the blue um, fitness is tracking upwards as well. And that's yeah, the basically the equivalent that Garmin's yeah. looking at. So that, that'll be why it's saying that you're peaking at the moment. Yeah, cool. Okay, it's good. Awesome. And in a couple of months' time, when we actually drop your training back and taper you, um, hopefully Garmin picks up on the fact that there's a lot more recovery uh, and a few other things happening, and it also tells you you're peaking there as well. Yeah, yeah. No, that sounds... Sounds good. It probably I've lulled it into a false sense of security from not running the last couple of days because we had ag fest. So it obviously thinks I've got a race that I'm about to do. It's like, oh, yep, that that would have <laughs> helped trick the algorithm as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I thought this morning when I said I'm peaking. I'm like, actually not. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Anything else? Nah, that's probably it for now. Otherwise, we'll just. Yeah, get into things this week coming up. I might for my run next weekend. Um, I might actually go right over Kawaka Pass. I sort of suggested to Michael I might start at Old Christchurch Road and run through to Milltown and he, him and the kids can come pick me and the dog up from there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I might just sort of go right over the top but quite enjoyed running through there today I was like oh this is nice the dog was really excited to be somewhere different he found some ducks and thought he might <laughs> go and get me one out of the water race so yeah nice. yeah so um but it was beautiful it was beautiful out there so that was um yeah that was good so yeah if I'm around this weekend on the coast I've got to get up to Nelson at some point I'm just not sure when that will be as yeah if I'm here I might just try and run over there and yeah do that just get a little bit more of um yeah just a bit of that incline again so you know generally run on the flats so yeah perfect cool all right well I'll leave you to it all the best thanks for joining us tonight and Excellent. yeah always after some more suggestions for next week if you've got any ideas for anything uh, for me to discuss in the next group coaching call um, jump into the VIP Facebook group and add a comment in there and I will plan and prepare it for you cool no that's awesome no and I'd be interested to know if you talk to Jess about her running to power um, yeah I'd be interested to know whether it's just something that she finds easy or that's just how it started so that's all she knows um, yeah I'd be interested on that insight yeah perfect cool right. awesome no, have a good evening. Sorry, what was that? I said have a good evening. Yeah, same to you. Cool. See ya. <laughs>